Hello stampers, I'm Helen Borer. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Seward, Nebraska. Today we're going to um, discuss everything related to these new blending brushes. They are fabulous. So what I have underneath my piece of Whisper White cardstock is a grid sheet that has been laminated. So it's like a plastic covering. Um, it helps because you can clean up in between colors and you can um, not end up with so many colors that you might wipe the wrong color into your into another color. So what I have here is um, lovely lipstick ink and a blending brush. And as you can tell, I'm starting off of the cardstock and then rubbing mostly in uh, circular directions. The, the, the circular motion helps to keep fine, you know, those odd lines from showing up in your blend. I'm planning to make an ombre panel here. I've brought in a little, uh, well, it's actually a makeup pad that I use to clean stuff, but I'm using it to hold my cardstock so that I don't get too many fingerprints on it. I don't manage to do that very well, but it sometimes even just sticking a sticky note on it and helping it to hold your cardstock is a good thing. So meanwhile, you can see I just go back to the ink pad and get more ink. I'm trying to get a darker shade down at the bottom. How much you dab into or rub your ink pad depends on how juicy it is. Um, this one has quite a bit of ink, so mostly I just dab into it a little bit. As the ink runs out in my brush, I like to I move it up the page so you get lighter at the top. And it keeps lines from forming. Here I'm taking my chamois and I'm just wiping the ink off of that laminated grid sheet. And then we're going to try another, well, actually what we're gonna do here is clean the brush. Knowing how to clean the brush is very important. Here I'm just wiping out any of the visible ink on a piece of scrap paper. And basically at this point, I could pick up another color of ink and continue working. I also bring in a microfiber cloth. I like to wipe it on that. I think it takes just a little bit more of the ink off of it. And I'm going to show you that with this little bit of cleaning, I'm going into some Crush Curry ink, and I can spread this yellow ink on this piece of scrap paper with a brush that just did lovely lipstick. That is neat that you can do that without having to use a different brush all the time. And here I'm just cleaning the yellow off the brush. And then we're going to go on and um, use um,
Okay, so then we're going on here and going to do a blue panel. And instead of using one color, I'm going to use four. This is, I believe, Pool Party. And then I'm going to use uh, Coastal Cabana. And then Bermuda Bay. And then Island Indigo. Meanwhile, I am using a different brush than before, but I could have used the same brush. So there's our Coastal Cabana and a little bit of Pool Party. Now I'm bringing in Bermuda Bay. And meanwhile, you overlap your uh, ink. And that helps to not give you harsh lines. As the ink runs out of the brush, I tend to go over the whole part above it. It helps to blend that. Okay, and here's the Island Indigo. And it's a bit darker, a little bit more blue color. And you're going to see here why I should have been using a sticky note to hang on to that. See that nasty little mark there? Came off of a ink stain on my fingers. I decide to try to remove it with my ink eraser. And that leaves me with a kind of rough white spot, which I go over it just a little bit with this ink. And I decide to put some more um, Bermuda Bay on top of that because that was the color above. And that pretty well disguises that um, boo-boo. You can't fix it completely because it, um, It leaves a rough finish, and so the ink just doesn't smooth as good. So here we're cleaning our brush. And next we're going to do a card using purple. Okay, so I go back to the brush that I've used with the red. And here we're going to do Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape. Use two colors to make an ombre background. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you all of the um, cards that I made from these various panels because it's kind of nice to see the finished product after you've um, made these. I have you know, a harsher line there than I like, so I go back to the lighter color of ink and push that over the line, and it really does seem to soften 
that and not make it such a harsh line. So that is a technique to use when you're doing like an ombre or blending is to bring back your lighter color and help it smooth the lines. And here again, we're able to clean off that mat. Okay, so at this point, I washed those brushes just under running water. And then it's the next morning and they are dry and we're using them again. I decided to punch out some hearts and do some blending. around a die-cut shape. Because that is another thing that is really nice with these brushes, is that you can um, very easily use a stencil or a mask to create a design. I decide here that I have too sharp of a corner, so I put the mask back on and just without more ink, just blend that a little more. And then I decide the other one's kind of too light, so I put the mask back on that and blend some more without adding any further ink. And here again, you see the brushes after I've cleaned them. And I'm using the microfiber cloth to dry them. Anytime you wash them with water, it um, they're gonna take overnight to fully dry. And I decide to um, try another thing you can do with um, these, I'm going to add just a light background around my donkeys. I used a mask to um, have the tail of that one donkey be behind the, the first donkey. And here I'm using just some crushed curry and putting a light, like halo of color behind those donkeys. And then I'm gonna put a little green down below them as if it was grass. And that is just a real simple way to add some uh, color to a uh, line image. And here are the cards I made. I used the a rose set. I used the shark set for the blue card and the hummingbird for the purple, a Valentine's Day card, and then the cute donkeys.